Hey everybody, Smile the DM back here, and um, today is a uh, another really interesting video that I wanted to just uh, to actually talk about. Um, so to make a quick video, like a quick intro, short. Um, there was this YouTuber or this guy that really wanted to talk to me on Discord named. I'm not even gonna bother with the with the scientific name, but he's he, the scientific name is literally uh, Sable Antelope. That that's that's literally his name is the scientific name for the Sable Antelope. But I'm getting I'm getting way past myself. Um, so me and him, we just uh, he wanted to chat with me, and I said, sure, why the hell not? And uh, we actually had we talked about like. A lot of different, you know, topics uh, at hand. Paleontology um, and zoology. Well, zoology was also one of the ones that we talked about. We talked about cryptids. Uh, we even talked about um, the freaking Cabela's games that we have played over the years. And um, uh, I'm going to try my best throughout this video to just illustrate the highlights of the conversation because... This conversation went on for about two and a half hours. Let's <laughs> let's put it at that. It went for around two hours. So it, it was a lot to go through, but I picked out the best parts that um, uh, me and him were going off at. So, and you know, honestly, guys, if you really just want to talk to me, like, I'm all up for it. If you want to collab with me, then just ask. It, like... It's not too hard, people. I mean, if a, if a sable antelope can walk up to me and say, hey, hey, yo, you want to talk? And I can say, I say, sure. Any of you could do it. Any of you. All you just need to do is ask me. That's that's really all you need to do is ask. And I will be very open with uh, myself. And I will try to answer as many questions uh, to the best of my ability as I possibly can. Um... But yeah, these are really the highlights of me and Sable talking, and I really hope you guys enjoy today's video. I've got really nothing else to say to that. I don't know, you first. You're the one who wanted to talk to me. Okay, so I want to talk about, like, um, I want to talk about Lost Tapes first. Is that right with you? Like, I want to yeah, tell no, you my, no. like, favorite episode. Okay, so for season one, my favorite episode is, that's going to be difficult. I think my favorite episode is Skinwalker. And I'm going to tell you why. So the reason why I think Skinwalker is one of my favorite episodes is because it's eerie. There's no, no, no human dies in the episode, obviously. There's some livestock that die, but I just like the episode because it's eerie. It goes into an ind indigenous American folklore very well, and I think it's well done. Like, not only that, Skinwalkers are very popular now, so that's why it's my favorite episode. Well, I, I'm, and I'm hoping you, I, I'm just assuming that you've watched my uh, other videos on my channel. Um, yes, there are reasons why, yeah, there are, there is a reason why I love Skinwalker a lot, because it, it, it's a family thing that I, that's the really the reason why I like it. Um, because I did a lot of sheep for like 10 years. I were I showed and, um, even raised, uh, sheep on my family's property. So, you know, that's why it's such a good episode. But, um, of course you, um, let's see for season one, I think it would still have to be Hellhound. Hellhound's my preferred one. Okay, so... Okay, here, so... I, so, obviously, my scariest episode is obviously going to be Skinwalker, because obvious, but here's my worst episode. And I know you said it's the Thunderbird, but I'm going to say it's Deathworm. And no, my I reason not, why... I did not say it was um, Thunderbird. That was everybody Oh, wait, else. but... Oh, wait, I thought you said that there was a problem with the uh, paleontological perspective of Thunderbird. That's just my, my point of view. Yes. Yeah. But oh, yeah. there is an even worse one from season one that I absolutely Oh, yeah, remember. Monterey Bay. I know. No, I get it. I'm sorry, Monterey Bay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I know, but here's the thing. Like, to me, my worst episode is Deathworm because they could have had, they have an iconic cryptid, like Mongolian Deathworm, but yet they, the, ter the scenario is terrible. The, char the characters act like idiots in that one. It's just, it's just not that great of an episode. They could have executed so much better with a really good cryptid like that. Yeah, um, I had to uh, revisit a lot of the uh, episodes that I haven't watched, and that was one of the few ones I haven't really rewatched, uh, including Oklahoma Octopus for the Kill Count video. 
And I, yeah, I'm surprised it was as bad as it was. Um, and then I rewatched Oklahoma and it was a little bit better, but nah, yeah, they really should have done a lot better for the cryptid, especially when they gave it all this really unique shit to it. Um, especially yeah. with the, uh, electric death charge it's got and the acid spray it's got. I mean, come on. It's a waste of potential. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is a unpopular opinion, but I actually kind of, kind of, key, key term, kind of, like Monster, Monster Mama, right? And hear me out. The reason why is that, <laughs> okay, I know you're disappointed, but here's, here's why. I do like the... I don't know if it's because I'm more used to a steady pace. I don't know if that's the reason why, because I do like the steady tone, and yes, there's the excuse, there's the problem of, yes, this creature could be underwater, it could be anything, and the CGI effects have not aged well, but I do like the subtle tone of it. It's just my opinion, at least. I just like the subtlety of it. Uh, and that's perfectly fine, but I, it, for me, even even if I'm going to have to disagree with the guy who uh, started everything for me. Um, I just find it to be a very boring episode, in my opinion. I just, I cannot get invested yeah. in anything with this episode. Yeah, and also it's the weaker first season episode. It's, it's also, I think it's, I see it as the weaker episode of any of the seasons, in my opinion. It's, I'm saying it's, it's not that bad, but it's not a great episode at all. I think it's the weaker episode. I mean, still, I feel I, like I still have the opinion of you could replace Monster of Monterey Bay with anything else, and it still would have had the same effect. Yeah. So, I want to move on to Season 2, and okay. my favorite is actually Vampires, and that's also my scariest episode, because I just like the tone of Vampires, I like the setup of it, I like the, 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 the I think the scare effects of it, and I do like the characters here, because it does seem a bit realistic. I'm seeing a bit realistic, but I do like the, the scare effects that they have on it. No, I still completely agree. I mean, Vampire is definitely still my, my scariest one, and by far, yes, it is probably up there. It's probably one of the best episodes they've done for the whole se series. So, uh, I'm not denying you on that factor, but I still like Southern Sasquatch because it is, it is a little more toned down, I feel, and it's a little more jokey. Um, in a sense, yeah. but, you know, in yeah, that, terms of, like, being actually scary, scary, oh. Vampire's it. Yeah, like, that's also the same thing, like, some Sasquatch, that's, like, very near, like, my opinion, like, like, my second favorite episode from second, but it's very close, that's why, so, my worst episode is White River Monster, and it's the same reasons that you had on it. The, the paleontological, there's no paleontological aspects on the episode, it, the creature that's supposed to be is a Sephacnus, yet they made it... This river's supposed to be... Yet the creature is so small, it didn't even look like a Sephacnus. That's my biggest problem with the episode. That and also the model that they used for it, it's also it's like, terrible. it looks dead. It looks dead. <laughs> yeah, it looks terrible. It looks like a small fish. It doesn't look like a Sephacnus. It looks like a goddamn, you know, fit, normal fish that just got converted into a zombie and said, there's a Sephacnus for you. And I'm like, no, that's not... No, guys, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Cool. Alright, season I'm three. Talk about... Alright, so season three. Oh god, season three. There's some. There's there's two favorites I have Poltergeist and Wendigo. Both of them because I do like the. Like, Wendigo, I have one reason for why I like it because it's realistic. Second for Poltergeist is because I like the scare. I just like how it's. And just the more paranormal but the more peculiar aspects of what could possibly exist so i do like both of them those are two ties for me okay uh do, 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 do. i gotta remember what i picked for the podcast i think it was windigo was my favorite from uh season three uh just because you know it's i scared the crap out of a friend of mine who absolutely is now crazy for native american mythology because of this um <laughs> Um, and that too, it's actually pretty damn realistic, in, in my opinion, yeah. Yeah, so, my worst episode is the Quetzalcoatl episode, Q the Serpent God. The reason why is because it took a deity from Aztec mythology, or Nahua, Nahua mythology, well, Aztec in short, and they just used it for an episode. Like, why would you use a deity where you could use just other creatures? Like, you can't use a deity, it makes no sense. That creature's a god in their culture. 
and you're and also how the character just hurts one of the creatures like okay so that character is apparently powerful because he she harmed a deity makes no sense <laughs> it makes sense to me because uh like i said before now there's a reason why i like you uh so damn much is because the uh the, the actress who played elise mooney uh she's one of the characters in um oh god and i hate to always admit this but uh she's one of the characters in high school dxd um, she was in the new season, and she voiced, um, probably one of the most, uh, the strongest, um, female Red Dragon Emperors, um, in the, in the history of, you know, being a Red Dragon Emperor herself. Um, so I found it, like, kind of funny, like, yeah, yeah. no wonder why she's that strong, because she actually beat the shit out of a god with another dude. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, but she's also you know she's also an anime voice actress. Like she voice, she does stuffs for animes and she also is a voice actress. Yeah, and I noticed that too because um I looked I checked on her Twitter too. She's going to a um a RubyCon uh a con uh this year mm. like on the fourth. Yeah, and it's like a meet together with all the uh, other voice actresses and actors there. Um. Oh God! So then, what would be my worst one? Um, so reptilian. From, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I here's the thing. I re, the idea of reptilians would have worked, but the problem is they went to a conspiracy aspect, which I really didn't like. I really did not like the characters, the officers, and the person who led them to the tunnels. They're not the brightest of characters. They should have been more smarter. You know, the conspiracy theory part of the whole thing. I'm totally fine with, because that is, you know, today's standards for reptilians. The thing that yeah. I don't like about this episode is, like you said before, the actors are, are not good at this episode, the people are dumb in this episode, and the way they end it almost feels like a giant middle finger towards the whole series. Like, this yeah. is the last is that... se like the last episode for the whole series, and this is what we get for an ending. Yeah, it should, like, you should have had a better ending if it's giving something like Reptilians, like, try to make something, like, more climatic, like, make it more suspenseful. But they don't. They don't. She gets murdered. So, yeah. The, <laughs> uh, dead. Um, yeah. yeah, also, fun fact about season two, one of the voice actresses, I mean, not the voice actress, but one of the actresses from season two Jersey Devil, one that plays the children, she's actually a K-pop singer. Um, which one? The younger sibling. Huh. Younger sibling. Huh. I did not know that. Yeah, but, yeah, is can we also question on that, like, like, there are these two Caucasian parents in Jersey Devil, yet, I, we have to assume that their other children are adopted, that because the, their two children are Asian, like, one's Japanese, the other's Korean. They have to be adopted. Well, you never know, maybe the dad's, um, part Asian a little bit. Or the mom is. I don't, I don't know. know. It's, it, it would be a know, weird theory to make, but nah, I'm not going to get into it. I'm, not, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that my theory is that they're adopted. That's that's all I'm going to say. They're adopted. And that this uh, the child that was going to pop out of the mother is the actual first kid they're really having. Yeah, that's their first kid. <laughs> okay, and not only that, but also no, I think... Lost Tapes should move to Shudder, because I think Animal Planet's not going to do anything with the show. Or at least that's what I think. I think if it moves to Shudder, then it'll be treated better, and I think the show will be better if it's on Shudder, because there'll be more interesting ideas. That's just my opinion. I just feel like we're still going to stick to the whole, uh, just put it on YouTube thing and let everybody, if they really want to watch it, you know, watch the, the season four, but, um... We could probably do Shutter. I think that might be an idea. Uh, we just haven't thought about it uh, yet because we're still in the um, developmental phase, if you will. I'm gonna start yeah, filing on right. the internet. <laughs> so here's a, here's where her I found it out. I saw I found it out through some monster books, like from Amber, like Amber books from the UK. Here's the thing: I'm from Ohio, but I we just got these books. I got these books from Amazon like years ago, like when I was a kid. I used to read these books on monsters, like, they, that's where I heard about the J. Ruge and the Buhag. Mm. And from, like, from the monsters like the Kiki Yawan and the, the Tata Duende, they're from Destination Truth. Hmm. 
Well, because for me, like, how I got into the whole cryptid biz um, was because of watching a lot of shows uh, on television. And that's all, for pretty much most of the creatures I know um, is just from watching television shows that are on cryptids. Yeah, that's the same here as well. Like, I watched Lost Tapes, like, aside from Lost Tapes, I also watched, like, Monster Quest, Station, Destination Truth, and I used to read a ton of books on cryptids or monsters and so forth. That's how I got, like, that's how I first heard cryptids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, for, like, yeah, what do you want, should we talk about paleontology next? Sure, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about the, uh, that huge vampire bat that the people discovered of the Desmodus Draculae. I've not actually read that um, that paper yet. Yeah, so this here's the reason why it's interesting because this is cited in Central America. This is this creature existed in the Pleistocene epoch where humans could be where they are in the Americas. So humans might have or Paleo Indians might have spotted this animal, and that could have been used for interpretation of creatures in their mytho in my mythology like the Camazots, which is a death bat, a giant death bat. Right. right. So, so there are some, in so, hold on. So it just, it's interpreted. What? No, no, go ahead, keep going. So it's just interpretations of, of creatures in mythology. That's what, it's like, that's how they interpret it. Like, they see a creature, like, it's the same with Bigfoot, like, Indigenous Americans or Pale or prehistoric hominids see a creature, and that's passed down to generations and generations to Homo sapiens, and they interpret it as a creature, like, or, or a mythological creature. That's how I interpret it as. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah, so, I also want to talk about the lost tapes uh, in, like, paleontological inaccuracies in that one. Let's start oh, with the first God. episode. That... Here we go, here we go, it's time to rip it apart. <laughs> yeah, I want to rip it apart, too. Okay, so back to our discussion of paleontological inaccuracies of all tapes and i got the episode guy the episode list right here just in case oh here we go i know we're gonna here's the thing i'm also interested in paleontology just like you are this also pisses me off as well for lost tapes so let's just get this over with it's fine, it's fine. okay so first episode i see that has anything to do with prehistoric animals whatsoever is the monster monterey or new nessie is there any issues with the paleontological aspects of that episode or no I find that one to be, I think, the the lightest of all the episodes because it it doesn't try to stay stray away from it being, you know, a lake monster or a plesiosaur for once. Um, so I think the information in the episode's okay, but it, it, I guess because it's you know updated standards, um, it could use some work. I think. Yeah. So this one is the Oklahoma Aquifer. And here's the reason why I find that paleontological, like some of it's paleontological, because where Oklahoma is, or nearby Oklahoma, there was an, o an inland sea in where the United States was, or in North America. It was during the Cretaceous period, known as the Tethys Sea. It's not the Tethys Sea, it's just the, it's an inland sea in North America. So the theory was that there could be an octopus that was, that was within the sea. And once the land, once it became landlocked and it became fresh water, it just adapted to a fresh water environment. Here. That's why I consider this episode paleontological. Right. Um, still, I don't think the chance of anything, even if it's oceanic, unless it's um, submerged it very, survive. very deep it's in not... water, yeah, it won't. It will it have survived. I know it. That was just a theory that some people propose. I'm just saying that it could be paleontological, but I even then the theory that the octopus could live there just makes no sense in my opinion. That's the right. same thought that you had. Right. Six is the devil dragon, or aka the Megalania, or I, I here's the thing, I prefer to call the animal Varanus Priscus because that's its actual name. Megalania is just a I think Megalania was the original name, but it changed it to Varanus because it's actually closely related to Komodo dragons, so I'm gonna refer to it as Varanus Priscus for now on. I still refer to it as Megalania. I'll, I'll still refer to it as Megalania. Also, can we talk about how much of an idiot Tim Akron is in that episode? Like, he's supposed to be a wildlife, like, survivalist. Yes, this makes me look bad. Like, <laughs> you know, like, whenever I see, like, those survival shows nowadays, especially, um, 
Um, Naked and because afraid? I had my grandfather watch uh, Naked and Afraid a lot. Um, and it's like, really? Really? He can't be this dumb. He really can't. <laughs> That's yeah, but for Tim Ackerman, you expect him to have more expertise. Like he's he's entering a continent where there's a ton of venomous animals. Like this, where he is, there could have been to coastal taipans, red back spiders. There's so many venomous animals, and venomous animals in Australia alone, and yet he he doesn't know how to deal with that. Exactly. <laughs> oh the, my god! And also, I like, mean, I mean, there is a mention, like there is a deleted scene. Of uh, Double Dragon, if you bought the um, the DVD edition for the for the first first season, and he does mention the fact that there is like this twenty foot long Komodo dragon that is stalking him, and he doesn't know why. It looked like a Komodo dragon, which does not belong here in Australia, but that would make perfect sense if it was because. That's what Komodos do. They bite their prey. And then there's a bacteria in their blood that causes a blood infection. Which is just like what I have. And then they stalk their prey. And then they wait for that infection to kill them. And if that's what was stalking me outside of my camp last night. Um, K a Komodo dragon is there. But then again, Here's the thing. He should have known that the reason why it's stalking him because the animal is waiting for him to become weak or die, so they or he can die, so that the creature can can, can devour him. That's mm -hmm. what it's trying to do. He should have known that. Like he's a wildlife survivalist. Yeah, he doesn't know that. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Also, he should know. He should know. Yeah. Also, fun fact about the Pomo dragon. They actually found this out. There's actually some people think it's venomous bacteria. They actually have multiple venom glands within, like, so one tooth can have multiple venom glands within one tooth alone. So it's just, it's just venom. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, because I, I still thought it was just the saliva of the, um, the Komodo dragon, if it does bite you. Like, um, that the saliva is, um, the thing that's actually poisonous. Um, or really it's venomous because it is biting you, in a sense. Uh, kind of like rabies a little bit, and that's how you get rabies, is the fact that if you're bit with, by the animal who has it, it's the saliva that, that causes you to have rabies. It's not the actual bite itself. Yeah. Also, for Komo Dragon, since there's multiple venom glands within the teeth, it's not good enough to inject venom. They have to bite into it and then take chunks out of the animal so that they can just get the venom into the, into the system of the animal. Hmm. Next up on here is, hold on. Thunderbird? Megaconda. Oh, Megaconda's Megacon. next. Okay. So, my theory was that maybe this episode was released before they knew what, like, the Titanoboa was, because they didn't mention Titanoboa whatsoever, so they could have... My theory is that they didn't know what Titanoboa was, because it might have been aired before that discovery. That's my, that's my theory on it. Uh, yeah, and that's exactly what we talked about in the podcast, is... Megaconda was made before they discovered Titan Boa. So, I guess it was like kind of a coincidence yeah. that they predicted something. Yeah, that like Titan Boa is a really awesome animal. Like, this snake is like 40 to 60 feet long, and it's a huge constrictor. Yeah, it's, very, it's bigger than even a, a green anaconda. I just, yeah, like, God. Yeah, it's. Next one is Thunderbird, and. I know you hate this episode, because here's the thing, I've seen the same problem as well. They use a pteranodon for the image, yet it should have been any other animal, like a condor, argentavis, teratornis, it could have been any of those birds, yet they chose a pteranodon. I know, I know. Uh, it still it pisses, pisses me off, because, yeah, even even then, like, the rest of the episode, they showed, like, um, the drawings of a condor, uh, like, being yeah, like, too. Yeah, but yet they should still depict Tyrannon. And even indigenous Americans state that it's not Tyrannon. It's just a huge condor or a bird similar to a condor. Yes. Yeah. And that's what really pissed me off. Like, I might be part Cherokee descent. I might. I don't know if I am, but even that. And, but it's not in Cherokee culture, but I'm like, and 
I, I just love indigenous American culture, and even I get aggravated with that episode a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Uh, I absolutely. Agree. Yeah. So next episode, if I can find it, Death Crawler. It's just Ooh. I know. Okay. Um, my question would be: Is the island that op- like that has that much high in oxygen for it to be that big? Because that's really how you're gonna get an insect well, that huge: is the amount of oxygen in the air. I, I, I don't know, but you just think, yes, that's true. You need, there needs to be a huge amount of oxygen within the atmosphere for arthropods to be growing in to that amount of size. Mm-hmm. M- my theory as to why these centipedes are that long in the first place is that they could be from insular gigantism because they're separated off from an iron, from, an, from the mainland. And since there's no mainland predators, there's no other predators, so they could grow larger because there's no predators and they can exploit the environment and the prey items more easily. I think that's why they could be larger. That's just my theory on it. Well, I, I mean, I kind of then question, like, um, could a tarantula but, then uh, kill a centipede? Or is it or is it just only a centipede can kill a tarantula? Uh, because there were well, tarantulas in that episode. Yeah, they're, okay, so centipedes, like, there are other predators that can kill tarantulas. It's not just centipedes, they're quadamundis, which are raccoon relatives. They can kill tarantulas. It's not just centipedes, it's other animals, like raccoon-like animals, like quadamundis. So, I think since where they are, there's no quadamundis. I think in that island, I think the centipedes killed the tarantulas there. Okay, okay. Because I, I, so, he- I thought that maybe tarantulas and centipedes are like natural enemies, I think. So, and yeah, so here's my theory. My theory on where the island is located is that it could just be off the coast of Colombia because Colombia is a Spanish speaking nation and it could be off the coast of Colombia. And that's where I think the island is located near because so, it has to be nearby some sort of nation somewhat. Mm. Some South American nation because, you know, you had the 90s crew go in there. Yeah. So, and also in terms of like for the animal they mentioned, like, Arth- Arthoplura, that's a veg- that's a that's a herbivorous that's a that's a herbivorous miropod. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Correct. And the fact they use a large centipede, I'm like, here's the thing, there are real life large centipedes, but they're not they like two to feet three feet long centipedes like Scorpion Gigantia, the Vietnamese giant centipede. There are real centipedes that large. It's just that I think I don't know, like this episode it's a weird episode in my opinion. Yeah, it's kind of hard to judge because they made, like, just, here's a giant centipede on, right on the fly, and you're like, okay, but where is all the other or, origin, you know, info about this thing? And they're like, well, we don't know, we yeah. just came up with the creature on the fly. So. Like, how, like, how it mentioned, like, the carbonivorous beer, like, mentioned how, why the animals got big in the first place, it's like. The huge amounts of oxygen within the atmosphere. Like, also explain Meganura, which is a huge dragonfly. They could explain that in the episode. Well, they couldn't have done well, Meganura because then uh, well, I'm that would have been like, a different creature. I know, but I'm just saying, like, the oxygen, like, give other examples of other arthropods that were larger that were large during that time. Oh, okay. So, I think we already, we already did this. We already did this, so it's a white room monster. I think we already gotten it down so we're not gonna do that yep who yeah bear like monsters next so um here's my take there were these inaccurate illustrations of marine reptiles where they go on land which they never did go on land they never went on land and here's the thing they give live birth in the water they give live birth they're oviviparous or they're mostly oviviparous that's why i think yes but yet this creature goes on land like that makes no sense. Like, is it supposed to be an ambulocetus, which is a werewolf? So, I think it should be, I think it's either an ambulocetus or a, like, any other werewolf that is semi-aquatic. See, because here's my take, too. First of all, um, the whole episode itself is on a fake creature. Like, the, the, yeah, the creature, creature was confirmed to be a hoax. hoax. Um... And then secondly, Monster Quest, since you brought it up, they did a second episode with the Loch Ness Monster, and they also depicted that it came on land at night, which is really weird. 
Yeah, it makes no sense. Like, okay, then not only that, but lot, but off subject, Nessie had numerous descriptions before they finalized it as the as a plesiosaur. Mm -hmm. Then that's. I just think that Ness. Here, my theory is that Nessie is a Greenland shark because they did investigate that with rare monsters. Because they, I think, it's a Greenland shark. That's my. That's my theory. I still think that it's um, a plesiosaur that managed to survive, but I know people are gonna say that's that's bullshit. Smell, come on, don't well, believe in that kind of crap. Um, well, yeah, but yeah, so I still think it's a Greenland shark because the bot, like how, like it could just be numerous things, like wave activity, could just be waterfowl that they could have misidentified from a far distance, like debris or any other native wildlife that they could have seen, like Greenland shark, for example. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so really monsters is just I really do not I like the episode's fun, it's just the information's not that great within the with the episode. No, yeah, it's very yeah. inconsistent because it's trying to be like balance terrestrial reptiles with also like predators that live in marine uh settings too. Which I'm like, oh yeah. boy. Um I'm trying to I was gonna say something, but now I completely forgot. Gosh darn it. Was it was that to be associated with is associated with like we could just move on. Yeah, I think we can move on. Okay, so the dove monkey, here's where I find this like here's where I find this paleontological. Like in some aspects, because there were larger primates like Dorotherapithecus, Oswaldi, there are some there were large baboons that exist in Africa. So I think that's what they could have been interpreted as. That's it just reminds me of large baboons that existed in Africa at one point. I mean, I can agree okay. upon the theory that um, Bigfoots are actually uh, surviving Gigantopithecus um, that migrated all the way from Asia to North America. And that's why, yeah, you know, the Native Americans had their legends about it. Yeah, through Beringia. Mm -hmm. Next is Q the Serpent. Wait. Yeah, Q the Serpent God, because it's yeah, the name, yeah, there's a Tyrannosaurus, there's a Pterosaur, I think you know this, that was yep. named after Quetzalcoatlus, yep. Quetzalcoatlus, in Texas. Which is probably still one of my favorite pterosaurs. Um, yeah, it's, it's immense, like, it's huge. Yeah, no, uh, it is absolutely gigantic in size. Um, it's even taller than a goddamn giraffe, which is already, like, 17, 18 feet tall. Yeah. Even though they have seven cervical, yep. even though they have the same amount of cervical vertebrae as humans do. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So last one for paleontological aspect is reptilian, and that's only because of the speculatory theory that they could have evolved from troodons. What? You've heard of that theory? What? No. That's. I'm not like. There's this theory, a speculative theory that. Saurians were from Troodons, and Troodons evolved to these reptilian-like figures because they think that Troodons are very intelligent in terms of dinosaurs. They're much smarter than other dinosaurs, and they think that these could have been the survive. These they could have evolved to reptilians. No, I don't buy that theory. I would be more personal well, only into the uh, the I'm, alien theory. I don't believe. I do not believe in that theory either. But I'm just giving you a theory of like the possible origins of reptilians. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, that, they also mentioned that theory in uh, Freak Encounters, which I watched as well. Really? With the, what, the hybrid alien episode? No, it's just like, no, it's the, suppose, no, it's the supposed origins of the reptilian, of the saurian. It's, it was based on the quiz segment of the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I I do not believe in that theory. I think that theory, in my opinion, is bullshit because it makes no sense. Because Trodons died out anyways. Like, how can a dinosaur die out in the first place? I mean, like, I'm mean, not like that. How can a dinosaur survive and then evolve into something more human? Like, it makes no sense. Right. Yeah. So, I also want to talk about freak encounters. Like, what's your opinion on freak encounters? Okay, so I have not watched the whole series. Let's let's start at that. So I can't give uh, too much of an accurate opinion about the whole thing. Um, the uh. only episodes I've seen are the Ahul one, the one for the Pugwudgie, and the one for the werewolf. 
the oh no, the werewolf and the giant rats. Um, All right. So I've only seen four episodes. I have not seen the other episodes uh, because I can't find them necessarily even on Daily Motion uh, very easily. Um, so I think it's okay. I think I, I kind of like the show. It's because again, it is basically one giant, gigantic ass prank um, on people. And oh my god, I would be terrified if I was a part of that. I just want to say that if I was a part of no, one I of was, those pranks, I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I would not be scared of one of those pranks. Like I was like, okay, they're doing freak encounters. Okay. <laughs> no, I'd be that. I'd be the. Um, I'd be the dude in uh, from the Ahul episode. I'd really hate everybody all around me. <laughs> After that, yeah, I think. I, yeah, I think the show's like fine. Like it's it, it tells you that the show's like the show's just a just basically one of those un it's unscripted shows where they bring a random person in, they dress up as a creature and try and scare them. So it, it as it what it does, I think it's a decent show. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. It's just, um, you know, it's similar to Lost yeah. Tapes, except it's, you know, um, you know, it's Lost Tapes is found tough. footage, but the other, it's the other way around. It's more of a prank. It, it's deliberately telling you that the show is not real. It's just, it's just fake. It's clearly a prank. It's just, that's what it's trying to tell you. It's deliberately telling you that. Yeah, exactly. Also, I watched the Genosqua episode, and I think that one's pretty interesting. I have not seen that episode, but I would really like to see that one. Yeah, and the the person who's getting scared, I I don't know, I kind of like her. She's, I don't know, she's, I think she actually annoyed one of the actors a bit, because I think you can tell from one of the actors that he's getting annoyed with her. Oh, was this the one where they were um, looking for uh, bobcats? Like they were doing a bobcat yes. study? Okay, yeah, no, never yes. mind, I have seen it. Never mind. Uh, what do you think of that one? I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I just, I just, I, uh, I didn't really like the scares all that much in this one. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the? What do you think of the victim in that show? Like Judidia? What do you think of her in that one? <sighs> it's okay. So here's the thing. Like it's very fate faded to me. Like. I remember watching the episode now. Once you mo once you pointed it out, like it took me a minute to think. Like, okay, is this the one with the bobcats? You said yes, and then I'm like, oh, okay. Now I'm starting to remember, but I don't think I remember everything from the episode. I think I need to just purely rewatch it. Yeah, I think. Let's also talk about monsters and mysteries in America because you also have some suggestions from that show. Yeah, I started watching that show uh, a little bit because, you know, my family luckily has on demand, so <laughs> I was very grateful for that. Um, but, uh, oh god. Yeah, I did learn a few more creatures from that show. Uh, yeah. God, let's, let's see. What the Manus Man? Ones? Oh, Grass Man was a good oh. one. Yeah. But I think that came more from the uh, original... Um, Lost Tapes parody that uh, a bunch of little kids did on the Grassman itself. Yes. So, I think that's where I really yeah, we, got to learn Grassman. <laughs> yeah, before you continue, I have something, like, I've seen something weird in the woods, like, years ago. Oh, interesting. Go. So, okay, so, my parents and I were in these woods. I don't know where it is. And we found this weird structure. It's it's similar to a hut. But it, I don't know if it's from a human, but it's a hut-like structure. Mm -hmm. I don't like. That's all I can remember. Like it's this hut-like structure. I don't know if it's a human, but it didn't seem like it's from a human. That's the issue. So this was not really a creature encounter per se. You just found something really weird in the woods. It. We. My dad thought it was my dad thought it was a bigfoot of some kind. At least that's what he said. I don't know if that's what he said, but it. I'm just saying that it just didn't look right from where it is. It's just a hut, like, th like you. Would, it's just a hut, but I don't know if it's a human or it was the supposed grass man. I don't know if it is. Mm. It, I'm just saying it's pretty, just weird. It, it did, they did say, did they say that this creature constructs these, like, weird structures? No. Didn't say anything about that. 
Um, yeah, no, but the thing is that the, but the thing is that the structures just looked out of place. It didn't look like it's from a human, though. Either it did from a human, but it's really recent. Hmm. Have you watched yeah. Mountain Monsters by any chance? I fucking hate that show. I watched that show. I'm not kidding. I fucking hate that show. Oh, come on. This show's so fake. <laughs> all right, all right. Because I'm trying to think, like, um, because they find a lot of Bigfoot nests, which I know, again, bullshit, but was it, like, all covered in leaves, or was it, like, something that was, like, just sticks being placed together to make it look like it was a, a hut of some kind? Just sticks. So, it's yeah, just okay. sticks. So, okay, yeah, so, because usually they would perceive that as Bigfoot sign if there's a bunch of sticks all standing up together like it's a it's a building so yeah it's just, yeah but here's my opinion on like mount monsters i think the show's bullshit because first of all they they act weird like the the people who are trying to investigate these creatures they act weird they, they don't act normal like and second of all the footage they use this for the creatures they're clearly cgi let's admit that yes Yes, I, I, don't, I mean, I, don't I mean, there that. are some practical effects in there too, especially with the uh, the reveal of the woman of the woods. Yeah. Also, fact for the bear beast episode, they actually killed a real bear. They shot a an actual bear, a black yes. bear, not a female, yeah. which is I think that's terrible. Yeah. Which is just I think that's terrible that they shot an animal, that not knowing that they they what they thought they shot was a bear beast, but they actually shot a black bear. The bear did nothing, and they shot the animal. Uh, I know, but but still, mm. it's, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It, it is. Yeah. it's bad, but I don't know. No, I, I still like the show for what it is. Yeah, I think all this show reminds me of is just Dungeons and Dragons, just with red, just with rednecks. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> that's what it basically is. You have the, that's what it basically is. You have the you have the brains. You have the leader. You have the you have, you have the chubby one, and you have the one that uses the firearms and the one that creates the traps. And they're trying to kill off these creatures, and, and they have a storyline. That's what it basically is. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, <laughs> oh my god! I'm like dying from laughter right now, like... <laughs> That's what it basically is. Oh, Jesus, no wonder why I love the show so damn much. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> alright, alright, alright. <laughs> oh god. They're going on these fake adventures trying to find these creatures. Like, let's name one creature already. Like, look at this. Like, I have the list up right here. Like, Mothman of Mason County, Grafton Monster of Taylor County, Yahoo of Nicholas County, Fire Dragon of Pocahontas County, Hogzilla of Hawking Hills. Like, really? Hawking Hills, Ohio? Wow, really creative. Anyways. <laughs> got... Hold on. Most of this is Bigfoot. Yes, it is. Well, uh, okay, so you want to try to find a fake creature? Okay. Wait a minute. What the? This is definitely Dungeons and Dragons, but a redneck edition. I'm not kidding. Like, what's... like oh my god, these. I don't know what. I don't know what to say. I never watched the recent episodes. I only watched season one and two. Really? You have not gotten into uh, three, four, and five? No, none of them. Because then it gets like then it gets to like paranormal shit and then I'm just like Okay, now this is definitely fake. <laughs> yeah, that that once again, like Dungeons and Dragons and interest in the paranormal. Oh my god. Okay, so, you know, and on the Wikipedia page, I'm not even kidding. They have a supposed bo feud with Bonnie, Bonnie Bigfoot. I'm not kidding. No, nah, I'd believe it. I would believe it. Yeah, but here's the thing. They never find anything. Both of these shows never find anything. 
Yes, because one's trying to be the superior one over the other. One's clearly yeah. made for entertainment. The other one's clearly made by one scientist in the show who thinks, oh yeah, she thinks Bigfoots aren't real, yet she's on a Bigfoot research team. What the hell are you doing, girl? Oh my god. Like, I don't know what to say. I, I just don't know what to say. Just this feud, I think the feud is just absolutely pointless. The feud's just nobody needs that feud in the first place. And you know what's also sad is that Finding Bigfoot um, had the Turtle Man on there, and the Turtle Man actually had an encounter with Bigfoot. I'm like, wh why? Why? <laughs> you didn't need this. He could have just seen a bear. Like, where was this located? I mean, like, I, I don't think you're going to know the location, but did he... S he did see something, right? Yeah, he was, like, um, yeah. out hunting in the woods uh, with a BB gun. And then he just saw something stand up, um, like big black something standing up, and then he uh, actually shot the creature. He didn't kill it, but he shoot he shot at it with a BB gun. Sounds a lot. Like, sounds a lot like a bear. Yeah, exactly. And then he had like fur samples still there to this day. I'm like, what? How? How'd you get fur samples? Why'd you? What did you just do? Go back out in the woods, find the speck of hair, and decide to, oh, this is important, let's keep it. Like, no. Because he's a wild man. Because he's a wild man. Uh, but he's not a scientist. He's not, he's not saying, like, ooh, this could be something really unique, because this looked weird. This didn't look like a bear to me. Yoink! Like, he just said it was cool. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Like, yeah, it could have just been a bear. Like, bears can stand up for a long amount of time that people usually expect. They can sometimes walk on their hind legs, but not for a long time, though. It could have right. just been a bear. Like, yeah, like, like, yeah. Like, my, like Turtle Man's not a scientist. He's just, he's just someone that captures animals and releases them out into the wild. That's what he does. Exactly. He's, he's not a scientist. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He could, he could, he could have just seen a bear and just said, that's cool. Like, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm entering a tangent here, but really, like, like, okay, you think it's cool, so what? It's just a bear. <laughs> okay, so, what's your opinion on Finding Bigfoot? Like, I want to know that. Okay, so I did watch the first season. And then after a while, I'm, like, starting to realize, like, why is this team, like, even a thing when all the dudes believe or believe in Bigfoot, but the one chick that they have on the team is the one who's skeptical. And then I keep constantly saying to her, I'm like, then why are you why here? Are you why are you in this group? I know. If you know that Bigfoot doesn't exist. Like, still, like, why would you join? Find this group of weirdos trying to find a fake creature. I don't know either. I don't know. You also talk about how Matt's surname is Moneymaker. <laughs> you live. You, you're, have you had any big, like? Have there been any supposed Bigfoot sightings in New Jersey? I'm not from uh, Jersey. From PA, Pennsylvania. Oh, oh, I thought you are from New Jersey. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. God, no, God, no. Um, but in PA, yes, we do. Like, um, towards... It's usually either Upper Western um, Pennsylvania or it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's usually on the Western side. It's usually yeah, on the we, West side of PA. Yeah, I live near Cleveland, Ohio, so... Like, Grassman sightings, supposed sightings of Grassman are from, like, eastern, central, to southern Ohio, so I was, like, probably near where... And also, Grassman sighting Cuyahoga Valley, so they're sighted there as well. Mm hmm So, yeah. And also, wait a minute. If I'm trying to think... Nah, I didn't have any sightings. I'm just wondering if I have some weird sightings, but I didn't. I've never had a sighting of anything. I wish I did, but never had. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, these supposed, like, I don't know. Like, I'm very skeptical of cryptids. I'm going to admit that right now because I debunk them a lot. Like, I debunk Bigfoot, Nessie, 
all these other cryptids. And but there's some creatures like the land between the lakes, where just like I don't know what the hell it is. I honestly don't know what it is. Like the Dover Demon, like they've clearly seen something, but like the theory of a loris, like who has a loris and how did it escape? Like, and first of all, the creature could have been the creature is larger than a loris, so we don't know what the hell it is. Could have been a um, a weird type of monkey. Could have been a weird monkey. No, because if it's a monkey, then it would have had a tail. <sighs> Shit, you're right. Yeah, and not only that, it's larger. I think the creature is larger than the other most species of monkey, so it can't be a monkey. In the head, in the head, it looks way different from a monkey. There's a sketch of it. Yeah, yeah, one of the eye yeah, one of the what original is... eyewitnesses. Oh. Yeah, yeah, one of the original eyewitnesses have a sketch of the creature. Right, and that's the sketch that they went off with. Um... Yeah, so if there was yeah. like a logical one that I could think of, it it could be either God, and you may disagree with me on this. A, it could have been a chimpanzee or gorilla. And it yeah, was just know, a real yeah. bad case of mis, uh, misidentification. I'm just going to, I think I'm going to do the mis, I'm going to disagree because the script, the creature's description just do not add up with it whatsoever, in my opinion. It just didn't add up with the description of a gorilla or a chimpanzee. And not only that, the creature have large eyes, and that's the thing. And then they glow too. Yeah, that that would be the hard that would be the hard part for me to figure out is the eye shine, because that's yeah, a huge that's a huge to, one. Yeah, we could try to try to reason this out, but we there this creature is just way too difficult to find out what it really is because there's nothing that there's barely anything that resembles it at all. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um. Have you done the uh, the the crew questionnaire quite yet? Um, no, uh, I have not done it. I don't. I don't think I want to. Here's the thing: I want to do college, but I I have not done the questionnaire. So you don't want to be like a script writer, maybe, for the project. Uh, I I don't know because I still want to be. I'm going to be in college, and I want to further my education because I want to get a PhD. I want to be a professor. I don't know how I can be a script writer because once again, these are ideas, so I'm not sure. Well, again, you could do it, like, uh, on your off time, because right now, I'm in college right now. So I know yeah. what, it, what it feels like. So yeah. you, you're only supposed to do it, like, you know, once you have, like, the time to do it. Oh, yeah, I've actually been, yeah, I've been actually making my own scripts for the episodes. Like, I've not done it, like, about a week, but I've been making scripts for it, like, trying to see what works and whatnot. I've been doing it for our Succubus, and I did it for the Turner Beast. Hmm. Just basically creating my own episode as it goes on. Right. right. Yeah, so, yeah, dude, I think, I don't know, I think I, I can be a really good script writer if I just have the time, because once again, I have really good ideas for creatures, just that I need to figure out the story for them. Yeah, we could use uh, a lot more people um, for the for the team, too, if you really want to, if you really want to join up. Yeah, and also. Also, have you noticed my username? Um, I'm, uh, yes, I have, but I'm trying to figure out, like, okay, so what is that? Because <laughs> I know it's, like, a scientific name, but I'm like, okay, which okay. one is it? It's the, it's, the binomial, it's the binomial name of a sable antelope. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm a huge cool. animal. Yeah, I'm a huge animal nerd. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I should start to get to know like scientific names of animals, especially when I want to be a zookeeper. But oh my god, okay, I did not realize that was a sable. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, a sable antelope. Like before you, yeah, you know. Oh yeah, I have more to talk about now. Thanks to the sable antelope. Okay, go ahead. It's about, it's about Cabela's big game. It's about the Cabela games. Oh boy, 
I right, played those as well. I played those as well. I want to know, like, what's your favorite game from the series? Oh, definitely oh. Uh, Big Game Hunter, like, 2007-2008. That one. 2007, like, where he goes to New Zealand, Argentina, Ethiopia, yep, Zambia. One. I played that game as well. I love that one. I one of my favorite. Love it. One of my favorites is Big Game Hunter 2005 Adventure. You know that one? Is it the one that's on the um, Game Boy Advanced? No. It's on the Game Boy Advanced, but it's also on the PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox. Hmm. I I wasn't wasn't really a fan of the ones that were on uh, handhelds. No, this this one's not on handhelds. Like, there's a port of it, but this one is is on also on the mainstream consoles. So, I don't yeah. I don't think I have played it. I might have, but I don't quite remember exactly. You also um, played the original Danger. You also played the original Dangerous Hunts. Uh, no, I have not played the original, but I have uh, played the second. Yeah. This yeah, the first one is fucking terrifying. Is it? All right, I guess I'm gonna have to plug it in and see how it goes. Oh, yeah, the first one's the first one. Here's the thing about the first one: the environments, like the topography, makes no sense. But it's narrow. Like you're supposed to be in this environment. It's more like it's it's supposed to be more narrow. Like it's more the topography makes no sense. But the scariest part is the ambience. Like it's very ambient, and once you hear an animal. You get startled by it. And the animal, and like the bears, wolves, like cougars, you get scared by it very easily in that game. Oh my god. And also in the environments, like some of the environments, like the woodlands, they can get there pretty dark there as well, like certain, certain levels. And it makes me look bad whenever I play 2011 and 2013, and I think that's shit scary when it's really not. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you just don't need it. You don't need a catheter to be scared. You could just make it ambient and subtle, and, that, and that's terrifying. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, that... Like, there's one level in the game. It's it's set in Quebec, and the forest is dense. I'm not kidding. It's dark there. Oof. Yeah, and I play Dangerous Hunts, and I actually love Dangerous, Hunt, Dangerous Hunts too. Yeah, I was going to try to um, finish it, but for some reason, the game won't let me move on to the next level for uh, Australia, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, here's the thing. I love these games a lot. Like, I, I play Dangerous Hunts 2 a lot. I beat the game numerous times on easy mode, by the way. So. <laughs> nah, no, nah, it's all good. Yeah, it's, but I still, I still like these games a lot. I think... These are the very games why I got into animals. Like, it's one of the mer- many reasons why I got into animals in the first place. This is really how I got into hunting a little bit, too. Was because of these games. Yeah. yeah. Like, what animals do you hunt, aside from white-tailed deer? Um, uh, like I've said before, I've really done uh, boar uh, as well. I've done boar hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I've done over the years. See, I might have done an alligator once. Ooh, that's interesting. Yes, because this was a yeah. Floridian thing. Um, yeah. That I was able to do. Um, and then everything else has just been pretty typical, like small creatures, like um, squirrels, rabbits, um, more or less coyotes. I had to do coyote mm. hunts. You did turkey hunts. I was going to do that, but then um, a whole lot of people had, like, other plans that they had in mind, and I went, ah, shit, well, I guess I can't do that. Um, also, I, cu- I couldn't even do a black bear hunt either. Um, what? what? Because, like, again, what's again family you? issues. Like, what's your issue for a black bear hunt? Would you hunt a bear or no? I think I would. I mean, I would be extremely nervous because, you know... If you if you fuck up That's in the funny. wrong spot, and then you're like, ah oh, shit, now it's coming towards me. Like, what the hell do you do? Yeah, for a black bear, there's a tip. For a black bear, you're supposed to make yourself boisterous and lo- and make yourself 
large as possible. Like, make loud noises, wave around, try to scare the animal off. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, when you shoot at it, like, when you first shoot at it, and it's not at a uh, particularly good spot, or the bullet didn't really go through all the way, and you're like, oh, fuck, I shot at it, now what the hell do I do? Because you can't really scare off a charging bear after you just shot at it. Well, if well, let's say the bear's not charging at you, and you just shot the bear when it's doing nothing. The bear can, most of the time, the bear's just gonna run off, like, not gonna attack you, because they're gonna be scared once they hear a gun, once you hear a gunfire. I guess that's true, yeah, but... Yeah, bears are, bears are scared when they when they hear a shot. They're mostly going to be afraid of it because they know that when they hear when they hear a firearm shotting off, they know that's from a human, and, and they know that they cannot kill a human most of the time because humans are going to be killing them more than the bears going to be killing the human. Yeah, well, that's true, but still, I don't, I, I really don't like the possibility of one, you know coming towards me because i hear a lot of the you know it, and it's and it's a different species of bear because we're talking now about grizzlies and i've oh, heard yeah. how how bad those attacks get and i'm like oh god yeah yeah grizzlies most of the easiest thing you can do for a grizzly or brown bear is to play dead because brown bears are not as smart as black bear There's... right but but still jesus <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, they can be brutal. Even though the Canadian on the team just says, like, oh, no, brown bears are just as just as much of a, you know, a wimp as blacks. And I'm like, oh, God, no. No. <laughs> Not for the stories I've been told. No. <laughs> yeah. Also, what did you use to kill a wild boar? Oh, fuck. I don't remember. To, I don't usually remember the guns that I usually use. Oh, yeah, because here's the thing. Wild boars, you can kill them with anything. You can bring in a salt rifle, you can use a boar spear. Like, you can use any weapon to kill a wild boar. I think I just used a normal I hunting rifle, I think. Oh, I thought you were more creative with it. No, I wasn't really that creative. Yeah, if I... Here's the thing. I would kill wild boar in the United States for, like, giving it to the homeless. That's what I would do. And if I see a wild boar, I would either use a... Like a board, I'll use a spear or just a normal rifle. We do it for the food, for reals. Yeah, yeah. I'll just if I kill Wobbler, I'll just give the meat to the homeless. That and then there's also the added bonus of like taking out an invasive species too. Yes, that's yeah. We have a ton of invasive species in the United States. Florida's ridiculous with the invasive species. Well, it's because of the stupid pet owners uh, releasing their pet because, oh, we can't take care of this thing. Well, you yoink it out in the wild. It should be fine. I'm like, oh, God. It's because of, yeah, of these fucking pet owners just bringing in these animals, either from a wildlife trade or they bought these animals and they just release them for no reason. Like, how dumb is that? That's so dumb. And then there was even one case that I... Um, that I watched on Fatal Attractions, which is another show on Animal Planet. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah. Um, where it was this one guy, he was trying to take care of his, what, pet anaconda. And, the, and killed of him. course, the anaconda got out and killed him. And then, whoop, out of the house. Wait, are you sure it was an anaconda or a Burmese python? python? Okay, then it might have been a Burmese. Yeah, because most likely it's going to be a Burmese python. Yeah, and there's also, there's like, there's a really fucked up case where the parents bought a Burmese python, and it killed a little girl, their daughter. I'd believe it. I would believe it. That yeah, really happened. The parents got arrested for child negligence. Yes, because the animal's not the one that gets the blame, because this it's is the, the exact animal. same thing that uh, happens in zoos, is that yeah. um, the animal's not to blame for its actions, it's the person. Yeah, and also, fun fact, that python is actually still utilized for teaching people how to deal with the snake. Or at least that's what it's being used, utilized as. Yes. The same snake that killed a little, killed a little girl. Right, no, no, I agree. So it's an ambassador. Yeah. Yeah, as well. Yeah, Fatal Attractions, like, there's, yeah, there's that one show called I, I'm Alive. You've seen that one, right? It's also on Animal Planet. I've only seen a few episodes. I think 
mostly all the episodes I've seen from it are uh, based on cougar attacks. Oh yeah, cougars are they're vicious. Like they're vicious. They're really good ambush predators, and despite their size, they can snatch a prey out of them that quickly. Yeah, I would not want to mess with a cougar, especially the the one video where it was a young cougar following this dude. Like Jesus Christ, yeah, I would be that. nervous. I, I would not be. I'm gonna be honest with you. With uh, I'm like I know it's a cougar, but I would not be nervous. I would. Um, I mean, like I look, like I know, like I think it's I think it's the same situation. If you just look at them and you know that you're serving your dominance, the animal just leave you alone. Yeah, because that's that's a thing too. It's like never turn your back on a cat because it, it yeah, it's cause an automatic death sentence. Because that's when you're at your weakest point. Never, never look. Just never turn your back on a cat. That's where you're weakest. Yeah. And I love how that's the same um, like, oh god, no, keep going. You can, you go. Sorry. Like that's that's the same with a tiger. Like I, I think I've seen this from I'm, from I'm alive. Like they said it like. You always have. You need to look straight in the eyes of a tiger. If you turn your back against it, it'll attack you. Yeah, because that's why um, I've I've had a lot of these uh, animal books when I was a kid too, and there was a set like there was a section of the book where it was big, talking about big cats, and the way that the Indian people how they dealt with tigers if they were working out in the woods is that they would have a mask behind their oh, yeah. head. So that yeah, it, so that it would confuse the tiger, like, oh shit, he's looking at me. I can't, I can't. Hold that's, him. In, that's in the Sunda bounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, I think this has been confirmed. The masks don't do anything because I think the tiger knows that, that that's just a mask. Well, I think it was it fooled at at first, and then and then it's like, yeah, no. I got you to it. Yeah. The, yeah. In the Sunda bounds, they killed like over three hundred people there. At least three hundred. Mm -hmm. yeah, like the tiger, like it's mainly in the Sundabans. That's where the tiger attacks are at their worst. That and probably Vietnam. Not wait. I I barely hear any tiger attacks from Vietnam. Really? Like I I only hear them from India and Far Eastern Russia. Like what's going on in Vietnam? Well, maybe because I'm thinking of the Vietnam War and how, like, um, a lot of the soldiers on both sides would be uh, killed by tigers because they would actually take how the opportunity to kill them. That's that's very similar to how the Jap like that's very similar to how in Ramsey Island World War Two, numerous Japanese people were killed by saltwater crocodiles. Oh my God, that's even worse. Yeah, that's that actually happened. You know up. what else is you know, the troubling uh, factor is that the Japanese basically killed all the Korean tigers because they were like, yeah, killing a tiger shows them off. That's horrible. Hold on. I'm looking up the actual death, like the actual amount of people killed during that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the island is called Ramory Island, by the way. For the Japanese, hold on. About 500 people died. 500 Japanese people. Oh my god! What are you doing, and guys? All, and that was all from Soul Order Crocodiles. <laughs> what the hell were they thinking? I don't know. I I don't I think it's because the Japanese do not know that they're Soul Order Crocodiles. That could be one reason why. They don't know that they're there, but... It, I, they're, I think they're panicking from the fact that they're losing the war, that they just... They have nothing to do. They can't do anything. <laughs> so they just went wee into water and then got killed. <laughs> oh my god. Well they tried it. Well they well they tried to escape, but they got killed by the crocodiles. Oh god. And only twenty of them survived. Ay ay ay. <laughs> Jesus That's, Christ. And I've heard of this from a YouTube video. I I I've heard that from a YouTube video talking about like Hor like horrible events, and this is one of them. And this is from a crocodile, by the way. That's from a solar crocodile. I know, and uh, you know what? Honestly, I be I would believe it. I would believe it. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm telling you here. Like, if there's any animal I'm scared of, 
it's gonna be crocodiles, cape buffaloes, and polar bears. That's the animals I'm scared of. Really, a polar bear? They they still prey on humans. They do. Well, yeah, but I mean, they're only like gonna live in the higher Arctic regions, but only like, because of climate only... change, they're moving into Canada. Well, that's what I'm saying. If I'm in a location where polar bears are present, I'm going. I'm going to be scared because they they prey on humans. And it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> There's there's also another animal I'm scared of. Which one? Parrots. Parrots. Because they're they're able to talk, or because of their sharp beaks? No, no they're they're beaks. I was in the Cleveland Park Zoo. I was feeding these green nape lorikeets, and they bit my thumb. And it was painful. Oh. And that's was, and that's why they even tell you like don't like don't let you know don't touch the birds. The issue is that, here's the issue, I was not even touching the bird, I was just giving the food to it, and it just got on my thumb. I just don't know, how are you supposed to do that when, how are you supposed to do that when the bird gets on your thumb, even though you didn't mean to do it? Maybe the, um, and I usually don't, I'm usually not allowed to say this to the public, but maybe the bird was a little, uh, too aggressive with people? No, it was not. No, I think it was on accident. Yeah, I think it didn't mean to bite me on the thumb. It was just trying to get the food. I think that's why. Or maybe it was trying to or, climb up your thumb? Probably. I don't know. It's, it's getting the nectar. That was what it was doing. It's just getting the nectar. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah those are... I'm, I'm just scared of parrots. That's one thing. I don't want to get bitten by them. I They're very painful. And I'm not kidding. I... And I'm not even joking around when they said that they're very painful. Yeah. You just... God, I can't... Like, I love parrots, but... I don't know. Especially the ones that, um... Especially the ones where they all swear in the household. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, that's more funny than... That's more funny than scary. <laughs> Except when you first come home, and then there's... It's like pure silence at first, and then you just hear from the hallway, Fuck you. <laughs> That's more funny than scary. Uh, well, that's it like, scared me as a kid a little bit. And the person that reacts is like, hey, where the hell did you learn that? It's like, it's like that's how a parent reacts when they hear a child swearing, even though they're the ones that they're swearing from the child the whole time. Yes. <laughs> that's that's why I find it funny, but Hey, wh where did you learn? Hey, where did you learn that? And even though they've been swearing in front of it the whole time, exactly. It's, that's why I find it fun. Oh my goodness. Um. Okay, so what animals am I afraid of? Oh my god. Well, bees and wasps. Obviously, I'm not too Makes fan. Sense. Too much. Too much fans of. But like, I know I understand their importance, but it's just like. Yeah, no. You know, they're painful. Yeah, they're. Yeah, once again, they're not good. They're not pleasant at all to deal with. No. No. Especially the uh, Japanese giant hornets. Yeah, they they can kill people. Oh uh, God, let's see what else. Sometimes tarantulas, like I'm on and off about a tarantula because just because of the appearance. You you know they're harmless, right? Well, aside from the er, sir, aside from the er, sit, sitting hairs, they're harmless. Yeah, I know, but ugh. it's just the appearance gives it away. I'm like, that's too big to be a spider, okay? Spiders are supposed to be small and little. That's too big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I love tarantulas, but I, I love tarantulas. Like I'm just I'm just used to like you know uh, wolf spiders a lot. Yeah, I like wolf spiders as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you are you scared of other animals besides from arthropods? There are some like uh, big like if I was to work in a zoo setting, there's a lot of big big uh, big cats that I'm really afraid of. If I were to work at a zoo. There's a lot of big cats that I'm just afraid of. Um, lions, 
Tigers. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, a Leopard I would be afraid of. Yeah, Jaguar. Yeah, Jaguars, too. Uh, yeah. Would you be scared of an elephant, though? Yes. Yes, I would. Yeah, because you can be aggressive at random points. Because of must. It's just because of must. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know what it is. That's when an elephant's test when a male elephant's testosterone levels enter 60 times higher than the usual. Yep. Yep. They're, they're extremely aggressive and And that's why usually a lot of zoos don't have male elephants because of that. Yeah. And the Clean Work Zoo, we have one male elephant because of that reason. Wait, which zoo? Wait. Clean Much Park Zoo. I've never actually heard the name of the zoo. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a very popular zoo in Ohio. I thought um, Cincinnati or Cleveland would be popular. Yeah. Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland Zoo are very popular. Oh, yeah. Damn it. I forgot about oh, yeah. the Columbus Zoo. Yeah. Columbus is owned by Jack Hanna. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I love elephants, but if it's a must, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be near the elephant if it's a must because I already I already heard of how aggressive they can be a must. So yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Rhinos, I would be afraid to work with too a little bit. Because then here's the thing: they have bad eyesight. They're not they don't have good eyesight, so they can interpret something, they, and they get shy really easy, e easily. They're just shy animals. Yes. And they're blind as a bat, so, of course, they're like, Oh, what the hell is that? That doesn't smell right. Bonk. Yeah. Which is impressive to see, like, why, you know, sometimes you'll see, like, uh, Kudu or Niala in a, uh, in a rhino exhibit. Which is pretty interesting. Yeah, because, once again, they, they have bad eyesight, and they'll, they'll try to attack anything of it. Because once again, these are shy animals. They don't. If they see something else, they're gonna attack. They're gonna charge at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. The rhinos are very. Lame. I feel bad for rhinos because they're getting hunted for the horns. Yeah, but and and we're trying. We're trying, but once again, China can just stop a poacher. Let's let's be for real. The only oh. way they're gonna really stop is until they're dead. Yeah, not only that, the Chinese government is also making everything work or so. That's true. Um, uh, let's see, what else would I be afraid to work with? Bears? Um, I think some bears, yes. Like, okay, so the like, brown bears, black bears, and the polar bears, that's what you're afraid of? I don't think I would be too afraid to work with a black. Um, like, so, would you be afraid of working with a sun bear? No. They they can, yeah. But here's the thing, though. Sun bears, like, in Southeast Asia, they, they do attack people. Yeah, but I think in a zoo setting, I think, um... They're, I don't they're think very I would adorable. be too afraid to work with, a, yeah, they're, with those kinds of bears. Yeah, they're very adorable. Yeah, they're very adorable. Um, specula uh, speculated bears, I would not be afraid of. Um, sloth bears, I would not be afraid of. They do attack. Yeah, the sloth bears do attack humans. By the way, really? Just warning you that. Really? Yeah, they do. Sloth bears. They do, they, they do kill hum humans in Southern Asia. Messed up sloth bears will attack people. No, not messed up sloth bears. Like sloth bears in southern, like sloth bears in general, they can they can attack people. Well, I'm just I'm just uh, referring to like the the mess of hair that they have all over their bodies. That's why. Yeah, yeah. They, despite their appearance, they do attack people. That's shocking. Um, I would not like to work with primates. Yeah, One, I'm just not interested in working with primates, and B, 
I've I've heard the horror stories of chimpanzees and gorillas. Yeah, they're they're unpredictable. Let's just admit that right now. Yes. Like, there's that one chimpanzee attack in Sierra Leone that I've heard of that it's just one person from vacation. There's some people from vacation, but however, there's one Sierra Leone individual that got torn up, torn to pieces by chimpanzees. Yeah, no, it's not fun. Yeah, and there's that one, and then there's Carla Nash who got her face ripped off from chimpanzees, like yeah. her face torn off. Yeah, they're they're really brutal. I'm not kidding. And that's why I'm There's afraid some... of them. That's why I'm afraid. Um, yeah. But what? it's also because yeah, like, I'm just not interested in working with primates, period. Even though... Like, I think primates... I think primates are interesting. Looking, my they, um, I think they're interesting. a lot of primate stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm interested, I'm interested in primates. I'm not. I'm not. Because it's just because that we're very, they were closely related to primates. We're in the same order as them, and also how how they're how some of them like chimpanzees. They're very smart. Yes. And also, I want to mention the fact that um, early elephants too, man. Jesus Christ, were they aggressive towards humans? Wait, what do you mean? Like, what are you about to say about them? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, like, early species of elephants that lived in Africa um, that were around the same time as Australopithecus, like, I mean, look at them. Like, there's Dinotherium's one of them, and then there's the other one that's in uh, um, yeah. Ancestors. But I can't remember yeah. the name of it. Gompotherium? I think it is. I think that's what it is. It's the one that has four tusks. Yeah, it should be Gompotherium. I'm looking it up. And it is Gonfotherium, I'm right. Look at that, you know more than I do. Yeah, it, yeah, there's, it's not just Gonfotherium, it, like, I've seen the elephant evolution, they're weird, like, it begins with Baratherium, then Meritherium, they look more hippopotamus slash tapir-like, and then they just, they're very bizarre, like Plathibelodon, Ananchus, especially, and then there's Paleoloxodon, Falconery, the dwarf elephants. Yes. Because they lived on islands. Yeah, Sicily, Malta, pr probably Cyp Cyprus, and Crete. Mm -hmm. And they're the elephant. El it's same with horse evolution and whale evolution. They're it's weird. Yeah, no horses are really, really freaking weird. Yeah, there's then there's like these small horses for paleotheriums. Then you get horses that then you get calicotheriums that walk on their knuckles. Yes. And then, um, what is it? Sheep with Andrew Sarkis. I'm like, how the fuck did you come from a carnivore to a herbivore? Oh, actually, it's confirmed that they're not related to sheep. Andrew Sarkis are more closely related to whales. Oh, okay. They're probably, their closest living relatives, I think, are hippopotamuses. Oh my yes, God, I'm right. I just get yeah, I, I'm right. They're closely related to hippopotamuses and whales. Oh my god. So that's another thing BBC got wrong back in the day. Good god. And also, another thing that BBC got wrong, Gastronis is a frugivore, not a carnivore. Huh. Huh. Despite it being like, Remember, uh, uh, like a giant bird. Remember, this was before that this was confirmed, so they just have to speculate. Well, I guess that's kind of true. Yeah, so, and the bird's name at large is just as tall as a human. Or at least as tall as a human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just as tall as a human. And then there was also so the that's... fact that, um, because Delval, uh, we do have a, a paleontologist here, and uh, he recently discovered a new uh, species or a uh, new fossil specimen for Hyneria. And uh, the, he did a, a talk about Hyneria and, and the species itself. And uh, he also debunked the fact that Hyneria could not um, attack on land like an orca did. Yeah, it can't do that. It can't do that, no. Yeah, it was depicted on wa on Wakon monsters. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, it, you think it would be possible because they 
have the fins for it, but they can't do that. And all of that, other organisms would put on land, so you would think it would do that, but it apparently didn't. Nope. Just nope. a giant ass fish. Well, it's more than a giant ass fish. It's just a large, giant carnivorous fish. Yeah, well... Yeah. Yeah, but usually fish are like 50-50 when it comes to, you know, being carnivorous or herbivorous. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. As well as... Yeah, you should have seen Clankin. You've heard of Clankin, right? No. It's that, that's actually probably the largest terebrone on the planet. And it has a huge skull as well. I thought the only one I could, I could really think of was... Um... Uh, Titanus. Titanus were Larry the North American terror bird? Yeah. But yeah, the, but the issue is that Titanus were Larry has a lot of issues in the first one. It's like, there's so many predators it has to deal with. They have to go out to find food for their chick. You know, their chicks are vulnerable out in the wild. But like, they are, they cannot fit, they cannot adapt well to the, to the environment. Which is true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that's that's the problem with Titanus really. Like and Clinkins won the won the original I think it's one of the original Terror Birds. Yeah, one of the original Force Rockets. Hmm. And also, do you know the living relative of Terror Birds? Um, that would be ostriches. And then um all the no. other birds that can walk. Oh uh, no? They're Serimas. Sarimas being... They're not that large. No, they're not even large. Sarimas. They're, they're not that big. Yeah, but what do they... What do they look like? I'm trying to find a picture. There. Okay, hold on. I don't know. Sarimas. I can find it. It's... I don't know. It's like a bird. It it has long legs, and the but the bills they prey on they prey on smaller animals though. So it's not like it's a nothing, uh, it's not like a cassowary or anything, right? Oh no, it's not even that. No, it's not one. Of, it's not a paleonath. It's a neonath. Hmm. So paleonaths are the old birds. These are the birds like the ostriches. The emus, the casuaries, the rias, kinamus, the kiwis, all those birds. The serima is a neonath, which is every other bird. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I'm trying to find. Yeah, also, like, I also love Walking with Beast. Do you also like that show? Yes, I do. I do. I do like the, how realistic it looks. CGI. It still it still holds up to this day. With like um, well, I, I don't think Walking with Dinosaurs has that same effect, but I feel like it still does, sort of. Yeah. Also, let's move on to like the Death Raptor Lost Tapes episode because I think I found something interesting about that episode. Uh, which is. Do you remember the, what they talked about that the sacrifices from Phoenicia? Oh yeah, the Phoenician gods. That actually happened. They found out that they did they did perform sacrifices. I believe it. Yeah, this is only that they they went through Carthage, which is a Phoenician colony in Tunisia. They found an archaeological site where there's a lot of dead children. Like it's suspected that the Phoenician the Carthaginians would burn these children these children who are around zero to four years old alive. Oh my god. Yeah, that's what they would do, and they do it to, to as a ritual for the gods Moloch and Baal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a Canaanite religion. This is what they would practice in the Canaan region of the Levant. So and I think they would do this. In, and you what? think the Aztecs, um, with their sacrifice to not 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 Quetzalcoatl, but to a bloodthirsty goddess in Aztec mythology was bad enough. 
it's not it's not a goddess i think it's hutzlio culturally just they sacrifice to that as well they sacrifice to different gods for aztecs well i thought from because i i had to read the creation story for um the aztecs and i thought that was um like the the god or the goddess her herself was the oh it's a god yeah yeah it was oh, some he... type of god or goddess yeah it's his name yeah, his name is Hutzleo Pochley. Yeah, that needed to satisfy uh, his bloodlust through human sacrifice. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not Quetzalcoatl. It's Hutzleo Pochley. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Why did they? Why did Lost Tapes make it Quetzalcoatl? Why did they say that? I'm thinking it's probably because of the. Um, it was either 2012 or 2013 event where the Aztec cycle was going to come into uh, 52 years. Uh, oh, that was the Mayans. They thought that. Or the Mayans. No, oh, oh, no, 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 no. The Mayans thought 2012 is going to be the end of the world. That's what the Mayans thought. Yes. But in the Lost episode, it's the Aztecs that thought that every 52 years is going to be it's going to enter chaos. So I've been fooled. <laughs> oh God. So the Aztecs are the one that thinks that. Every 52 years, you have to perform the sacrifice, and the Mayans are the ones that predicted that 2012 is the end of the world. Which, I don't know, I don't know if it really is the end of the world. Did we all die? Is this technically how we're all dead? No. I don't know. Like, no, they didn't predict it right. It's just, once again, this is, this is, this is indigenous American, like, they're not that advanced, and, like, don't... Don't get me wrong, they're very advanced. Like the mines, they're very advanced. It's just that they pro they just don't know when they they thought they just thought the world would end because of what they believed in. Right. That's yeah, it's just very interesting that something what they mentioned lost tapes happened in real life. Like the Carthaginian sacrifices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I think I need to uh, I need to take a second. Oh yeah, I think. Mind. Oh yeah, should we end it off right here? I mean, do you want to, or do you want to keep going? Oh, I actually have. I do not have anything to talk about. Actually, I think that's good enough. All right, so you think it's good? All right. Oh yeah, that, it's actually a really good time talking to you. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It actually was. I mean, people think like, yeah, never, never meet your heroes, but I'm like. I'm a decent guy. I mean, I act kind of the same, like, you know, on and off camera. So, you know. Yeah, it's actually really good talking to you. <laughs> exactly. So. All right. So we're going to end the call here and let's just, let's hope we can talk another time. I don't know. I don't know if you want to talk later or whatnot, but I think we'll figure something out. All right. That'll work. Alrighty. See ya, man. See ya. See ya.